Again, welcome everyone. Nice to be here sharing with you. My name again is Nayaswami Devarshi. I think I know most everybody here. The satsang this evening, I'll just be talking about the essence of what we do, who we are really, because we often define ourselves by what path we are on. I'm a Kriya Yogi, I'm a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda, and these things are true, but they're describing what we do and not who we are. And we sometimes forget, I think we often forget, sometimes we always forget who and what we really are, which is Satchitanandam, divine bliss. Swami Kriyananda, it's interesting that he chose the name Ananda for our organization, and it's almost humorous and even ludicrous to think that Satchitananda can be the name of an organization. And I think he was trying to say that we are not an organization. We are divine joy and divine bliss. And that is the goal of life. It is what we are. It is who we are. It is the goal of Ananda as a spiritual family, not as an organization. We know the story of somebody asking Swamiji, what is the mission of Ananda? And the person was asking this, was asking it in a very important kind of a way, like this was a really big question and he was waiting for the really big answer. Like we had this huge mission in the world and Swamiji said, the mission of Ananda is to have fun. And everyone laughed and appreciated the humor in it. But then he went on to say that we have to have joy in whatever we do. And if we have joy, then we will change, the world will change. If we have this big sense, important sense of mission, with self-importance and grim determination, then the joy starts to go away and we start to lose sense of the whole point of it all, which is satchitanandam, merging back into God as ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new divine bliss. And so how do we do this? How do we find expression in it? How do we do this when we're not finding joy in our lives? There's two things that I'm going to talk about and this again comes from Swami Kriyanandaji because what he did in the way that he manifested Ananda, which it's amazing what he did in one lifetime. If you look at all the communities he started, all the books he, he wrote, music he wrote, one person, it's impossible for one person to do that. So to do that, he had to inspire many, many others. And that's the key. He inspired others. There's a beautiful quote I read recently. Someone said, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men and women to gather wood, divide the work and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. And this was Swami Kriyananda. He inspired us to yearn for the vast and endless sea of divine bliss. And in fact, he said, we came from the ocean of bliss. That's who and what we are. And when you think of coming from this ocean of bliss, there's an infinite ocean of this bliss to share, to realize, to tune into. And this is what Swamiji tried to uplift and inspire in us. If I, I was thinking of this this evening, if I had a choice to choose between the inspiration and the joy that Swamiji inspired in all of us, or the teachings of the meditation, Kriya Yoga, and all these things, if I could only choose one or the other, I would choose only the inspiration and throw out all that other stuff. Of course, with the way Swamiji worked and the way he taught, it was these two together. It was the teachings, meditation, with divine bliss and divine joy. And in fact, it's the two of these together that really, in the best way, sums up the path that we follow. The stanza in the Bhagavad Gita, which I'll read, which in some way I think is the most essential two stanzas in the whole Gita that describes the path that we follow at Ananda in, a, in the most general way, but also very specifically and to the point. Chapter 12, stanza 1 and 2. Arjuna said, Between those who worship you with steadfast devotion and those who concentrate on the Absolute, which is better versed in the yoga science? The Blessed Lord answered, those who, with minds fixed on me, 
are ever united to me in pure devotion are in my eyes the best versed in yoga. And the answer was not one or the other. Minds fixed on me and united to me in pure devotion. And this is both yoga, meditation, concentration. These are the practices that we do. And when we have that same focus with devotion, feeling with bliss, then we are united with the Lord. And there's two ways that Swami Kriyananda taught us how to do this. One was in meditation and within, and the other was to find expression for it. Because as Swamiji said later in life, someone asked him the question many times over the years, why did God create the universe? And we've all heard this question, we've all asked this question, and we've all heard different answers for it, and everyone has their own maybe explanation. Swamiji's was the best, and he tuned in, into this deep inside as he was experiencing divine bliss more and more towards the end of his life. He said that this world came from divine bliss and that it is the nature of bliss to want to share and to expand. And he was talking about himself. He was feeling this bliss and he just wanted to share and give it and expand it. And this was Ananda, which is that this joy finds and has found expression in expansive outward ways in every facet of life. Right now at Ananda Village, there's an annual event in California, and the gardens that Swamiji helped to manifest there, the Crystal Hermitage Gardens, are just amazingly beautiful. And this is the, the story of Swamiji and Ananda, is that this bliss and this joy must find outward expression and must be shared with others, because this is not Kali Yuga anymore where we run away from the world. Swamiji quoted a yogi who told him one time that don't find joy in anything in this world because you'll get attached and you'll get caught. And Swamiji's approach was the other way. See joy in everything in this world, the joy of God, and express that joy and bring God into the world. And so everything that he shared, gardens, right now there are 17,000 tulips blooming or about to bloom. They're starting to bloom at Ananda Village. 17,000 tulips. Think of the color and just the joy in the expression of that. And what does this have to do with yoga? 17,000 tulips. And now, you know, I wondered that too. I was the first gardener there. I was the gardener under Swamiji for seven years. And I wasn't the best gardener who created this beautiful place now. I helped to get it started. But I, by then I understood that Ananda's way was to share joy in everything. Music, arts, literature, teaching, sharing, the arts, for example. Swamiji calls it, what do you call it? He didn't call it the yogic arts or the Vedic arts or the cosmic arts. He called it the joyful arts because art should express joy. Now, there's two aspects of that that come together in this reading from the Bhagavad Gita, which is that if we just experience this sort of vague ethereal joy without the focus, it, there's some joy and there's some lightness and yeah, people will feel it. But when it has focus, it has concentration, the way these, the stanza in the Gita describes meditation, we also apply it outwardly. Because when it has focus and concentration, then you have a gardener who plants 17,000 tulips in an incredibly beautiful way that just uplifting and inspiring rather than just kind of scattering them all over the place and having them not even sprout because they didn't plant them properly. It took concentration. I think of this with the arts also. I think maybe one of my, if not my favorite artist is here, Shamani. I won't, I'll try to embarrass her, but her art just expresses just such color and joy. And just there's this real joy in it. When you look at the art, for me, I, I also see amazing skill. And just when someone has skill in the deepest way, it, it's not like they show it off. It's just, but when I look at her art, I think, how did she do that? Because I look at different parts of it, and I know that there's concentration, there's discipline, there's skill, there's having learned it, combined with deep feeling and expression of divine joy. And so this is Ananda, is finding joy in meditation and experiencing it and sharing it with others. And in a way, it's not one or the other, it's both. Because you will find that what little joy that you have 
if you start to share it with others, it starts to grow. It's how you feed that joy, whether it's in the arts, whether it's just in sharing with friends and family, in business, in, in gardening, whatever you do. And so this is how we do it. And in meditation, I'm going to talk more about it, how we do that, because with meditation, but also with all of life, this is the great secret, is that joy is always there. And all we have to do is look for it. And it's kind of like a treasure hunt in some ways. And I have found that no matter what the circumstances in life, if you look hard enough, deep enough, calmly enough, in the right way, and if you do it continually over time, you will start to see it more and more in more and more situations. And in meditation, this means consciously looking for bliss when you meditate, rather than waiting for God to lay it on you someday. And if you think grimly, if I just meditate every day for the next 10 years, maybe at the end of it, God will give me some joy. Well, it doesn't come that way, I'm afraid to say, because there'll be 10 not very joyful years. And I've seen myself at times get into this approach, and I've seen many others. But I've also find that if you really, really look, you will find it. In meditation, this means after techniques, after the mind is calm and concentrated, trying to really sensitively feel joy in the heart, especially is where you start to notice it first. Sometimes you'll feel it in medulla, spiritual eye in the brain. But if you just really look, rather than just kind of waiting for it to happen, you will find that you get skilled and practiced at being able to find it. Now, Swamiji once said that, because we think that joy is the eventual goal and it's the reward for being good boy and girl yogis and living a good life. But Swamiji said very clearly, joy is not the, the goal, joy is the solution. And joy is the answer. And try to look for joy and express that joy. And I can say that when you become more and more skilled and practiced at looking for joy, you can find it under the most difficult circumstances that you can imagine. And I can say that from my own experience. I have, in the most physically painful experience, the most emotionally grief intense, worst experiences in my life, because I know what Swamiji taught, I have looked intensely and deeply behind those things and honestly can say that I have found joy in all circumstances. It takes some serious looking sometime. It doesn't mean it comes right away. But I guarantee you, if you keep looking and trying and praying, because this joy is also the intelligence of the universe, it is God, if you pray to that, you will find that you can find it. Now, outward expression of it. Try to find joy in all outward expressions of life in everything that you do. I've shared this story before, but uh, in America, it's customary for to not hire people to do your housework. And so we do our housework at our homes, most of us. And it's also customary for the husband and the wife to share equally in the housework in, in many places. And so for many years, my wife and I shared the housework. And I just was not very enthusiastic or joyful. It was really hard for me to see joy in it. And it took <coughs> my wife a long time to understand how to get me and how to trick me into this. <laughs> because cajoling, come on, Devarshi, the bathroom is your job to clean, clean it, and it just didn't work very well. One day, we would clean every night. Once a week, we would have the big cleaning. And one morning, she came to me just with so much joy and so much enthusiasm. It was like a breathless child who just was going to go to Disneyland that day and just could not even hardly talk about how excited they were. And she just said to me, you know what we're going to do tonight? just with this breathless anticipation. And I had no idea what she was talking about because <laughs> just, it just didn't make sense to me. And she looked at me with all this excitement and she said, we get to clean the guru's ashram tonight. And she was talking about our weekly house cleaning. And it just flipped a switch in my heart. And it helped me to see joy in the most mundane task. And again, if you look, you'll find it. 
And it's just a matter of finding a way to do it. And this is something, again, Swami Kriyanandaji taught us. And so looking for joy, finding joy, expressing it, sharing it with others. This is what Ananda is. This is who and what we are. It's our path. It's also who we are. And it's where we came from. Swamiji said about meditation in particular, and I think you could apply it to this stanza from the Gita. Religious rituals should be performed with both interiorized consciousness and devotion, not absent-mindedly with mumbled words and vague gestures. And I think all of us have done Kriya Yoga with sort of mentally mumbled words and vague gestures of just going through the motions. The more wholeheartedly one can immerse himself in the feeling as well as the meaning of the ritual he performs, the more he will absorb divine inspiration into himself. So the more one can immerse himself in the feeling of it. And again, this is the key. This stanzas in the Gita essentially is, Yogananda paraphrased it when he said, Kriya plus devotion works like mathematics. It cannot fail. And Swami Kriyananda said about devotion, he said that love is the first manifestation of divine bliss. And these two are very closely related. And they both work with divine feeling. And so if we can live with this sort of passion of wanting to see the vast oceans, in this case, ocean of divine bliss, tune into the inspiration that the great ones have given us, you'll find that that intense feeling is what fuels you for a lifetime of spiritual seeking. Because again, if you have this thought that if I meditate grimly for the rest of my life, eventually God will come, God will probably not come with that attitude. But if you do it with a sense of intensity, passion, joy, devotion, inspiration, and giving it to others, you will find that it grows more and more. You look for it and you find it more and more. Finally, I just want to share one of the most amazing quotes in Autobiography of a Yogi. Because Yogananda has the experience of cosmic consciousness. And then in the experience, full experience of Samadhi, he writes about it in his poem, Samadhi. And then he goes to Sri Teshwarji and says, when will I find God? And Sri Teshwar, I'm sure he must have laughed at this young, young boy who just went into Samadhi and comes back and says, when will I find God? And Sri Teshwarji says, ever new joy is God. He is in inexhaustible. As you continue your meditations during the years, he will beguile you with an infinite ingenuity. Devotees like yourself who have found the way to God never dream of exchanging him for any other happiness. He is seductive beyond thought of competition. Again, he is seductive beyond the thought of competition. So it's all about joy. It's all about awakening it looking for it, learning how to find it. It's about expressing it in everything that we do. If you have a garden, if you don't have room to plant 17,000 tulips, plant a dozen tulips. Swami Kriyananda, one of the things I noticed with him, again, very unyogic, opposite of this yogi who said, don't find joy in this world. And Swamiji asked this yogi, you know, if I see a beautiful sunset, should I not even be inspired and feel the joy of it? And this yogi said, no, no, no you'll be attached and you'll get caught in delusion. And this was not Yogananda's way either. And so try to look for God in all of creation, in all people, in all situations, even the most difficult ones. And again, I promise you, if you look in the right way, if you look hard enough and deeply enough, you will find it. Now, one final thing is something that struck me. Many of you know Narayani, who was Swamiji's assistant in his later years, and she wrote a book. And there's something in there that Swamiji said to her. And he said it to her with a lot of importance. And I want us to apply this not only to ourselves, but to others. And he was very serious when he told her this. Narayani, promise me you will never let anyone kill your spirit. And for those of you who know Narayani, she's this very exuberant, joyful, feeling-oriented person and very expressive of it. And I think that's what Swamiji was talking about. You're saying, don't let anyone kill this expressive way that you have. And so one of the great 
and I think Swamiji was saying to all of us, and I've heard Swamiji or Master say this, that one of the worst sins that we can do is to kill someone's enthusiasm for God, for whatever they are doing. And so look for ways, when someone has an enthusiastic idea, even if they're a really stupid idea, and I think we've all experienced this, someone has an idea and it's really stupid, but they have so much enthusiasm for it, and, and don't just say, that's a stupid idea, because it kills their enthusiasm. It doesn't mean we have to support the idea, but find a way to not push down people's enthusiasm, maybe redirect it, or get behind a similar idea, or find what's behind that enthusiasm. In the same way with ourselves, look for ways just to keep this childlike enthusiasm in our lives, because you see children, and you, you know, one of the beautiful things of being in India, especially in cities, where there are millions and millions of people, and you just sort of start watching people and seeing, and you just see God in people, but you also just see certain lessons, and you see people who have been beaten up by life, and the enthusiasm is gone, and yeah, they've had hard lives, and every life is hard, it's no, no life is easy. And you see children with this bouncing enthusiasm, and you think, what happened to that enthusiasm? And you realize that the world is almost designed to knock down our enthusiasm. And you see this in the news. I mean, the people who pr pr produce the news, it's almost like they're conscious enthusiasm killers, because it's always bad news. Bad news about bad people. When there's news about good people, it's because bad things have been done to them, and this is a bad world, and there's not joy in it, and it starts to just weigh you down and kill that joy within you. And try to have this childlike enthusiasm in yourself. Don't kill this enthusiasm or joy in yourself, but also in others. And so again, be very, very conscious. Our lives, our spiritual path is divine bliss. Consciously awaken it, look for it in meditation, consciously express it, share it with others, find ways to bring color, joy, enthusiasm into your life. Simply, this is what Swami Kriyananda gave to us. And if you find that outward expression, you're going to find God in every aspect of life. And that is, in a way, the mission of Ananda that Swamiji gave us. So let's, day to day, tonight, tomorrow, look for joy, find joy, share joy, give joy to others, and you'll find that this is how we merge back into this ocean of joy that we came from. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.